What is the best way to prepare for an interview as a nurse or a midwife? What are some of the anticipatory questions you have to look out for when preparing for your upcoming interview? This is the Nature and Lifestyle channel. My name is Mordecai. Please, if you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe. Now, let's start with the preparation itself before the interview date. A lot of people may have applied to the job you are going to be interviewed for and probably you are not the only person being interviewed. You have to prepare very well. This means you have to give your all during the interview. You can't leave any gaps for mistake. No, you can't leave any gaps for mistake. This is why you have to make sure your preparation is done very well. That is why you have to cover all the areas that the interviewers may ask questions about. But first, even before the interview day, there are some essential things you have to do. Now, one of those things is you have to read through your job description. So as a nurse or midwife, when you are offered a job, you are shown the job description. The job description here essentially shows your responsibilities or your duties when you go to work. The things that you have to be doing at your place of work. You have to read through this because some of the questions the interviewers may ask you will come from the job description. So you have to know this. Then again, your appearance. You have to appear good. There is no specific way of dressing when going for a nursing or a midwifery interview. No, there is no specific way. The only thing is you don't have to look too casual. No, don't look too casual but appear good, have a good smile, just relax yourself and have a positive mindset. Tell yourself, I am going to go through this interview successfully. Now, the next one is you going to the interview place on time. You have to arrive there on time. It helps you relax as a person. It is natural for everybody to go through some form of anxiety when going for an interview, but you have to get there on time. It helps reduce the anxiety that is in you. Also, the interviewers will see you as somebody who will be very prompt to work. If you arrive there late, that is a fair signal. That is a negative signal to the interviewers that you may not be the right person for the job. Because of COVID and travel distance, these days most interviews are organized online. When your interview is being organized online, there are some things that you still have to do in order not to ruin it. The first thing is, if you use a computer, a tablet or a laptop for your interview, you have to make sure that it is fully charged up. Also, your background, the room that you'll be doing the interview, has to look nice. You don't have to leave things anyway because it gives negative impression about you. You can't really control your internet connection during the interview, but what you can do is you can test it multiple times before the interview time. So this is also an essential tip. If you are applying to join the UK NMC, it is advisable for you to read through the NMC UK Code of Conduct. Generally, the Code of Conduct is about showing dignity and respect to patients and their family. It's also about some of the rules and regulations that we have to maintain in our place of work. It's like a general guidance for nurses and midwives whenever we are on the ward, whenever we are in our offices, whenever we are dealing with patients and their family. It is advisable that you read through this code of conduct before your interview if you are applying to work as a nurse or midwife in the UK. Having said this, let's look through some of the anticipatory questions we may be asked during our interview as nurses and midwives. These questions, I have grouped them under several headings. So the first one is general interview question that is not only specific to nursing and midwifery job. No. An example is, tell me about yourself. When you are being asked by an interviewer to introduce yourself, they just want to get a sense of your personality. 
They just want to know whether you are suitable for the job. Here, just tell them your name. Tell them probably not compulsory, but you can tell them your age as well. Then you have to let your introduction to yourself veer towards your nursing or midwifery career. Okay, that is what they are interested in. They are not interested in your childhood stories or a church you attend or your skin complexion or where you come from or all that. Okay, introduce yourself and quickly take them through your nursing or midwifery career. That is very important. The next question here, can you tell me about your current and previous experience? Now with this question, the all that they want to know is your clinical skill. What are your clinical skills? What can you offer to them when they employ you? What can you do as a nurse or a midwife on the ward or at your place of work? So take them through the places that you have worked and the clinical skills that you used in those places and tell them what you can do to help them. What are the clinical skills you can do to help them as well? It is advisable for you to give detailed explanation of about five to 10 clinical responsibility. And guys, be very specific and also describe it as if you are on the ward. That is very helpful. Another general question they may ask you is, what do you enjoy about nursing? We all have specific reasons why we join the nursing and midwifery profession. Some join the profession because they love working on the human body. Others too, um, they just love to care for other people, to show compassion, to be empathetic, towards other people and this encourage them to join the nursing and midwifery profession. Others join because it's a rewarding profession and probably their role model in life is either a nurse or a midwife. So whatever reason why you join the nursing profession, whatever reason why you love nursing, you have to really explain to them. Please don't be over ambiguous about this. Just go straight to the point and explain yourself very well. Now guys, this is tricky. Why do you want to quit your current job? Why do you want to leave your current job? When you are being asked this question, you don't have to speak ill or you don't have to talk negatively about your current place of work. If you do so, it opens up more space for the interviewer to ask you more questions. And you may end up saying some things that may not go on well in your interview. So with this question, you can simply say, you love career development, you love new experiences. Therefore, you think when you join this new facility, it will help you achieve your aim of developing your career. You also learn more about the new people you are working with. This is a good answer. You can equally say that you love to travel to other countries to work and you believe that when given this opportunity, you traveling will help you know more about different cultures, will help you know more about different way of practicing nursing and midwifery. This is simple. Again, do not talk negatively about your current place of work. The next question they may ask you is, what do you know about this hospital or about this care home? And why do you want to work with us? Questions like this are the reason why you have to do thorough research about the care home or the hospital that you are applying to. You have to know whether the care home is just for nursing care or it's um, a residential home as well. You also have to read about your hospital. The number of beds in the hospital, there's various specialization in the hospital. Whether it is a referral hospital, a teaching hospital, a district hospital, or which kind of hospital is it. This will give you a very good knowledge about the institution you are applying to. So when asked questions like this, you will not be fumbling. Some specific questions such as what are your strengths? 
can also be asked during your nursing or midwifery interview. Now, when asked this question, you have to go straight to your responsibilities. There are a lot of things that you can do as a nurse, but there are few that you can do very, very well. You can give them about two or three strengths. You explain very well and let them understand why these are your strengths because they will be looking forward probably for you to do those things when you are finally employed or when you are working in the facility. Do not talk about plenty things. Do not also say only one thing. It is not good. Two or three, I think, will be good. Another question they may ask you is, what is your main weakness? What is your main weakness? Guys, it is not advisable for you to tell them you have no weakness. You are not God. You are not an angel. We are all human beings. Even they, the interviewers, have weaknesses. We all have weaknesses in our place of work. Look for one or two weakness and explain to them that this is why this, this and that is your weakness. And this is what you are doing in order to correct that. So for an example, you can tell them that you are the type of nurse or midwife that when anything happens at work, it is difficult for you to put it away when you get home. Example, you'll be thinking about that your patient whose general condition is not improving, that your patient who is very unwell clinically. When you come home, you'll be thinking about this patient and sometimes it gives you headache. This is a weakness. And you can also tell them that you are correcting this by one, giving your all, making sure that you provide proper nursing care to your patient who are unwell so as to speed up their recovery. Also, you can tell them that when you get home, you read some storybooks or when you get home, you watch some programs in order to take your mind off those problems at the workplace. This is simple. Another question they may ask is, what can you offer to this ward, to this unit, or to this hospital, or even to this care home? Now here, think about your strengths, the things you can do very well. Your skills, your passion for the job, being a team player is very important. You talk about you being a hard worker, but the thing is, do not just mention this quality in isolation. You have to tell them that, yes, I'm a team player. So when I'm employed, I will liaise very well with my other colleagues. I will liaise very well with the other members of the multidisciplinary team in order to plan care to our patients. Okay. Then, as I said earlier, they may most at time ask you about the NMC UK and the NMC UK code of conduct. They will ask you because that is very, very important to most um, employers in the health sector in the UK. Now, we are done with the general questions that they may ask. Okay, so no matter which field in nursing and midwifery you'll be working at, they may ask you the general question that I have just spoke about. Now let's look at the specific questions that you may be asked also. Now this specific question cover most sectors of our work as nurses and midwives. It could be about medication administration, infection prevention, documentation, record keeping. It could also be about conflict resolution and how you liaise with the other members of the multidisciplinary team. Now, First one, let's look at a scenario or a question under medication administration that you may be asked during your interview. You are undertaking the medication round. One of your patients is complaining of pain. After your patient assessment, you administer cocodamol as prescribed on the drug chart. After the patient has taken the medication, they then tell you they have taken their own paracetamol recently. What are your actions and consent? Analyzing this scenario, so the patient is complaining of pain. After assessing the pain, you gave cocodamol. Now, cocodamol is a combination drug. Okay, we have codeine and paracetamol combined to form that medication. 
after administering it, you realize that the patient has taken paracetamol, but the patient didn't tell you this before you gave the cocodamol. What do you have to do? Immediately, you have to assess this patient. You have to check the clinical observation, ask more questions. You also have to notify the doctor as soon as possible to look at the plan of care for this problem. You have to educate the patient about self-medication in the hospital. You also have to advise the patient to give you the medication in order to store it in the correct place in the hospital or to tell the patient family to take the medication home. Then you have to, most importantly, you have to document whatever that happened and whatever that you have done. Your concern here is there may be overdose of paracetamol if the interval between which the patient took her own paracetamol to the time you gave the cocodamol is very close. So you have to plan your care towards this. Another specific question is, you are asked to administer medication that you are not familiar with. What do you do? Now, in this scenario, what you do is, one, do not administer the medication. You have to seek for more knowledge about whichever medication you are being asked. Now, in most care homes or in most hospitals, we have the BNF available. So you can refer to the BNF. You can also ask your other colleagues like the senior nurse which is on duty or your, even your colleague nurse may have knowledge about this um, medication. You can ask the pharmacist or the doctors if they are on the ward. Now also in most UK hospitals we have an app called Medusa that you can check when the medication is intravenous medication or intramuscular medication. Medusa will also explain it. So generally, do not administer the medication. Seek for more knowledge in a very correct place before you administer the medication. Another question is, how do you prioritize your workload? What do you do when you have a number of conflicting priorities? So how do you prioritize your workload? You have a lot of things that you have to do. In this instance, you have to ask for help. When you have about two or three very sick patients at the same time, you can't do the job alone as a nurse or midwife. Just ask for help from your senior colleague or from your other colleagues on the ward. But when you are the only person there and you don't have anybody to help you, you do it in order of importance. You assess the patient, you check the patient's clinical ops, and that will help inform you about those, are, those that are deteriorating very fast, okay? You also have to use the ABC way of assessing patients as well. So that patient who has problem with the airway will be your most priority patient, then followed by the patient who has problem with breathing, then followed by the patient who has problem with circulation. But as I said, most importantly, you ask for help. They may also ask you questions about conflict resolution. Example, about a time you've had to deal with an angry patient or angry family members. How did you resolve this situation? Guys, don't tell them that you've not dealt with this situation before. It gives a bad impression about you. You have already told them you have about three, four, five years experience in nursing and midwifery, okay? You can't tell them that in all these years, you've not come across this situation before. Even if truly you've not come across this situation before, just think about a very positive answer to give. In this instance, the first thing is you have to be calm yourself, okay? You don't have to be angry as a nurse or midwife to resolve the anger of a patient or a patient family. Just be calm. Listen more to what the patient and their family are saying. Now, after listening to them, you have to reassure them of good care. You have to take them from that environment because that's a very boiling, hot, fury environment. Take them from that place to another quiet place. Then you listen to them more. Also, you have to apologize to whatever that happened. 
If truly your colleague did something wrong, you apologize to them, you call your colleague, you speak to your colleague to also apologize to them. But if the fault is from the patient and their families, still apologize to them, read through some policies and guidelines with regards to that specific situation for them to understand. Probably it's lack of understanding that is causing the anger. If you can't deal with it, call your senior colleague or call any colleague who is around to help you deal with the situation. You don't have to be angry yourself and you also have to listen to them very well and apologize also. They can ask you about what do you do when a patient falls. Most care homes and hospitals have local guidelines or policies with regards to inpatient falls. So when a patient falls, you have to follow those policy in the hospital and mostly you ring the emergency bell okay you press the emergency bell to call for help you assess the patient you check the clinical ops you have to also note whether it is a witness for or unwitness for that will inform your decision whether to do a neurological observation or a normal clinical op you also have to tell the doctor about this you have to inform the patient family about the false as well so you just follow the false guidelines or the false protocol in whichever facility that you are working with another question what do you do when a patient complains of pain what do you do when a patient blood pressure is high with regards to the pain you need to assess the patient's pain the location of the pain the duration of the pain what type of pain is it okay then you need to also inform the doctor about it if the patient has any prn medication you can administer it to the patient if the patient is due that medication another very important question that they may ask you is about infection prevention and control we know infection prevention and control is a big issue in most hospitals and care homes around the world okay as nurses and midwives, we want to reduce hospital acquired infections. We want to reduce the rate at which infections spread from patient to patient, from patient to staff or from staff to patient, or even from patient family to patient or vice versa. So here you have to talk to them about the standard measures of controlling or preventing infection, hand washing before and after every patient contact, hand washing, before and after every procedure that you do on the patient, okay? You can also talk about wearing of personal protective equipment like gloves, apron, visors, mask, even in this time of COVID, this is very, very important. Following this question, they may also ask you, what is your understanding of evidence-based practice? And why is this very important to your nursing career? So most of the things we do on the world, we don't just do them in vain, okay? We do it those ways because some people have done research about it and have found out that the specific ways we are doing those things will help improve patient health what, very quickly. So this is just a quick explanation about evidence-based practice, okay? The last but one anticipatory question we are going to look at is, give an example of a staff conflict that you have encountered and tell me what you did. If that has never happened to, think about a hypothetical situation and tell me what you will do. So this is also about conflict what resolution. So um, here you can give an example about you going to see your colleague, okay, doing something wrong to a patient or performing a nursing procedure in a wrong way, okay. Now in such situation, what they just want you to say is you will not in the presence of the patient or in the presence of the patient family shout on your colleague or rebuke your colleague in a way that will give a negative impression about the institution what you have to do is calmly call your colleague to a different place explain 
that whatever he or she is doing is wrong. That is not the correct way. You can advise your colleague about the correct way of doing things, okay? Then you also have to inform your superior about this incident, especially if it is so bad that it will have a negative impact on the patient or the facility. You need to fill an incident form or a data form as we call it in most UK hospitals, okay? Guys, there are so many of these anticipatory questions for nursing and midwifery interview, but I will leave it here. I think the ones that we have gone through are the ones that are mostly asked by most interviewers during an interview for nursing and midwifery job. But one thing with an interview is the question shouldn't be one way, okay? After the interview, you be after the interview, mostly you'll be given the opportunity for you to also ask them some questions. Don't tell them you have no question to ask. No, it is not a good impression about you if you tell your interviewers that I have no question to ask. Personally, during my nursing interview, I discussed my salary very well, even before they gave me the job. Guys, this is very, very what's important. You have to try and ask your interviewer some questions. Thank you very much for watching today's video. This is Nature and Lifestyle channel. My name is Mordecai. Thanks for watching. Please share this video. Please leave your comment in the comment section most importantly subscribe to our channel and also like the video as well see you another time